Hey guys, don't be worried if, you know, I'm not being much energy as in this what if, but let's get into it. So, I last slept off for a decade, went back home after he after getting himself, you know, folded by Rhino. But we get, we get Deku going back to school the next day, walking in class. Everything in class is exactly the same. Now, guys, in the um, commentary, you guys said you put a lot of interesting ships and, you know, partner, partner ups. And pretty much, I take it a lot of, you know, um, what was it? Ideas. I got Froppy. That was okay, but. I won't do that. I might do that for you know a certain shell shocked team. What if that I'm going for making that could be a part of a green power team? But yeah, we'll get into that later. So um, I also will be. So someone else said um, Kindo and Mount Lady. Now Mount Lady, I was first you know gonna turn Mount Lady into like a Gwyn, um you know. Uh, like a, a Gwyn type of, you know, position, but, well, um, until somebody else paid up another ship with, um, that girl from the My Heart Academia movie that was a friend of All Might's, um, friend, like, the daughter of All Might's friend, um, I don't know her name, I put it up right at screen, like, right now, a picture of her, yeah, her, now, he said, the guy that gave me this idea said, because it would be a good match because they were both nerds, and she would be able to give him all sorts of gadgets and stuff. So, I actually agree. So, I will be doing two ships with Deku. I will be doing Kendo because, well, I might want to make her into sort of like a, um, sort of like a Mary Jane. And I'll be making, um, her, her into sort of a, Gwen Stacy. Now, I'm not gonna pull Gwen Stacy on her and kill her off, but maybe? But yeah, I guess get off of that. So, Deku, pretty much that girl in an unnamed seat was her. So, I'm actually giving her a quirk in this one. Her quirk is called Sense. Now, I wanted to make her kind of like Spider Man. But not too much so that she might be like exactly like that Deku. So basically, she has sort of a spidey sense. Like, each time she's in danger, imagine she can feel. When they, each time she's in danger, she um pretty much feels a tingling sensation. Not in her head, but like all around her body. Like somebody's tickling her. So, pretty much. Uh, her power is sort of different. Um, I'm at, her spider sense is a lot more stronger than Deku's, per se, because Deku has to look around. She, he gets the warning that he's in danger, but Deku has to look around to see what's, it, what's, you know, causing him to be in danger. But her, she automatically knows what she's in danger from, like, from a bullet or a quirk or the building's about to, the building she's in about to collapse or something. Like that. So, it's not a strong, like, warn warning list like Deku's. Because she does, like, you know, get a little tingling sensation around her body. Not to a point, like, she hears a tingling at the back of her head. So, pretty much, her quirk is a lot, her spire sense is a lot more stronger than Deku's. But she, she did do some physical training. She did work on, you know, athleticism. You know, how it flips and cartwheels and all sorts of, you know, Gymnasium stuff. Now, Deku, basically, she has the same athletic skill as Daredevil. Daredevil, you know, doesn't have any super strength or super agility, but she does have enough agility, you know, give Deku a run for her money, but not, you know, out speed, outclass Deku, because Deku can easily beat her any day of the week in, you know, athleticism. So, Deku, pretty much, next day comes, comes of the school, and this. In this um, tournament of events, last time I said that Mineta didn't get expelled, scratch that, Mineta got expelled and got replaced with Kendo. So Deku, so Deku sees Kendo in Mineta's seat. Deku is sitting there and pretty much just talking to, you know, the girl he talked to last time, flirting with her, 
pretty much having a good time. Eventually, the owl walks in class, spends the class that they're doing, and it, before they do that, All Might jumps in and says to the class that they're doing quirk assess, they're doing um combat training to get him to their hero costumes. The Deckard's hero costume uh, did get greatly inspired by his, you know, vigilante costume, but it was more, you know, um, charred up to be more, you know, classic and be a lot more different from his vigilante costume. Now, and I also forgot, guys, it's another ship that somebody said to go with her. Um, I will be doing that ship in the future because I don't want, you know, to mess her up and pit her into Class 1A. So I'll be doing that ship later on. So, yeah, guys. Deku's hero costume is sort of just like, you know, the classic Spider-Man costume. More based off the, you know, artwork of the Ultimate Spider-Man. But yeah, Deku's hero costume basically is just the generic Spider-Man red and blue costume. Now, I wasn't going to do anything fancy. Just He's just going to have the generic Spider-Man red and blue costume. But Deku is going to switch the costume to costume, depending on what she would imagine Deku in. So this is one version of Deku's outfit, the original Spider-Man outfit, and this one. Deku's going to be wearing this time to time in public areas, more or less, you know, a public suit slash, um, kind of, you know, hero-like. So Deku can, you know, shift into a hero costume. So Deku's civilian clothes are kind of like these. So yeah. Because this is Deku's, you know, first homely design of his, you know, hero costume, not his vigilante costume. So Deku will be wearing this time to time, maybe at the sports festival, or the forest training arc. So yeah. So Deku basically walks in class, walks out of the, you know, changing room in his, you know, original red and blue costume that Spider-Man wears. Walking up in there. So everybody looking around saying that Deku's outfit looks really cool, and... All my sister looks really iconic, looking like a certain pro hero in America. Now I'm not talking about Spider-Man doesn't exist anywhere else, but he does. But he, but um, uh, Spider-Man House of M does exist in America, but he has like a lot more, you know, weaker powers, and he isn't, you know, that that um, up at their hero, like he's at probably the ten play, the ten number one hero in America. But yeah, Deku goes in there. Everybody's saying Deku's outfit looks really cool. Now, Deku's outfit, in texture-wise, is kind of like Tobey Maguire's outfit. You know, it has that um, popping out web texture. And it's kind of shiny in the eyes. So, Deku walks up in there. Everybody's saying that's pretty cool. And pretty much, they get told by all me about how this works. And that they're all teamed up. Deku's teamed up with Ho. Deku's teamed up with um her... And De- Bakugo's teamed up with Ida still. So, so Deku walks up in there with, um, uh, man, I forgot her name. I mean, I don't know her name, but I will come back in part three and explain what her name is. If you guys already know what her name is, go in the comments and, you know, tell me. So, yeah, Deku, so pretty much her, her, her hero costume is kind of different. Now, Kendo's costume is exactly the same, hero costume, but her hero costume, because she never had one originally, because she never had a quirk originally, her power, her um, suit is basically kind of like, um, mm, kind of like Spider Gwen, Spider Ghost, or Spider Gwen's suit. So basically, it's just like that suit. Pretty much, let me show you a picture. Her right here. So basically, her costume is exactly like this, but you know, time to time the mask is barely on there, so it's just the hood. So basically, she walks up in there, and her hero costume does have you know, a a belt right here, and she does have like you know, um, what was it, Scarlet Spider type of web shooters on her wrist. Now those aren't really web shooters; they're more or less grappling. Grappling shooters, like they grapple out, they like shoot out um electrical whips, so she could time around people and electrocute them, kind of like you know um like how you do like Ghost Rider does with his chains, but you know with electricity. So basically, she walks up in there, with her hero costume on, 
and Deku looks at her and says, a pretty good outfit. So they start off the match, and Deku tells her to go upstairs and, um, you know, try to take down Ida or keep him occupied when I take out, you know, the real problem, Bakugo. She says, okay, and sprints off. Deku sprints off in the other direction, going down the hall. Deku's running and running and running. Eventually, he gets to, um, a hallway where Bakugo is, and Bakugo's waiting for Deku and says, so you've been lying to me. You said you were quirkless, but you weren't. Deku says, I can explain, but for now, you're going to have to shut up and get, and get out of my way. He says, no. And pretty much throws explosion off the bat at Deku. Deku dodges it, and out of nowhere, Bakugo aims right at Deku's head, shooting, the, shooting his gauntlet. Deku sees this and gets pushed back into another, into another um, room. Unless getting knocked out, Deku gets up, seeing that, you know, Bakugo's about to walk into the room. Deku camouflages and wait, waits until Bakugo's in there to, you know, venom shock him right in the back. Bakugo gets pushed back into a wall. <coughs> Sorry, guys. And Bakugo gets back up, kind of, you know, the sword hand, and throws an explosion, another explosion with his other gauntlet towards Deku. Deku dodges it, grabs De Bakugo's, you know, collar, and chucks him out of the window. Bakugo does catch and get his, you know, balance, grabbing onto another, you know, um, outlining of another window underneath the window Deku chucked him out of. Deku webs Bakugo to the side of the building when he swings out of the window that he threw Bakugo out of and swings back into the building through the same um, window that Ida and the bomb is in, seeing that he was cl crawling up against the building. Masao sees this is kind of something familiar, the some sorts, and Deku webs straight towards um, uh, straight towards Ida, webbing him to the floor, pretty much you know sucker punching him straight into the chest, kind of like Spider. Deku's you know fighting skills sort of like Spider Man's fighting skills in PS um, Five. Pretty much, you know, just slamming people in the ground and pretty much overall breaking people's bones. Because there's no way Spider-Man PS4 ain't breaking people's bones or giving people concussions or putting people in the doc doctor's office. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm signing with James, James Jordan James's Because, like, he straight up be bodying, Spider-Man straight up be bodying, folding, mother. He straight up be folding people. Like, there's no way he, he hasn't killed anybody at this point. Like, Spider-Man in PS5, he be folding people legit, not even letting anybody off the hook. Like, he, it's no way those people ain't having internal bleeding after he be punching them. It's not, and maybe he be punching them senseless. Let's get back into the story, though. So, Deku pretty much sees that he is knocked out and runs over to the bomb, touching it. After, you know, he notices that, um... Um, the other girl, ah, please tell me what her name is, I forgot, and pretty much he sees, he sees her underneath there, and about to touch the bomb, because she was, you know, hurt a little bit, because Ida did give her a super kick straight to the stomach, into a nearby pillar, so she was crawling towards the bomb, while Deku is was taking care of Ida. Deku already touched it at this point, and the hero team was giving, you know, the win. Deku picked up her, and said, are you okay? And I might just call her Blondie, so picks up Blondie, pretty much says, are you okay? And she says, yeah, and pretty much they walk out of the building with her, with him holding her um, cradle style, like in Isabella style. I mean, yeah, so they walk out of there, and he gives her to recover a girl. Deku walks over to Ida, and straight up socks her straight in the face. And Ida's like confused or something, and Deku says, you straight up, you straight up super kicked your shit into the stomach, dude. You couldn't just, you know, knock her out or something. Aida says, because she was a hero and I had to stay true to my part. Deku was about, you know, Venom Blast, his mother. But Venom Blast is full, but it gets stopped by, uh, Kido, 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 Kendo, saying that it's not, not worth it. And, you know, you should probably, you know, just calm down. Deku calms down just a little bit and says, Man, you better watch your back and walks off. Ida seeing that deck is kinda strong, wants you know be a friend so he doesn't you know, turn out to be, you know, a jackass. Mbakugo is still, you know, knocked out cold. 
because Mark, they had to, you know, get All Might to get up on top of the building to, you know, un unscrew, I mean, take the webbing off of Bakugo. Later that day, he get, Deku gets stopped in the street by, you know, Blondie, and she explains to Deku that, um, I want to help you out and see that you, you mostly only use your webbing in, you know, tying or swinging situations. Pretty much offers Deku to make him some gadgets. Deku says, oh, okay, and pretty much goes to her, you know, lab. So, Deku goes into her into her lab, and Deku's looking around saying it is pretty cool. She takes her t takes him to a fabricating room that she made her hero costume out of, and says that, so, is there any gadgets in particular that you want to try out? Deku looks around and looks at her failed experiments. And Deku is, you know, smart, smart himself, so he's pretty much the same, you know, uh, smartness as he is, that, as, um, pretty much the science-y parts of Peter Parker. So Deku sees a failed experiment called this, the, um, little drone. Deku says, so, what is this? He says, oh, it's a failed experiment. I couldn't make it do what I want to do in programming in such a way. Deku says, well, I can help out. And over that night, they finish the project, and Deku renames it the Spider Drone. The Spider Drone basically, basically can be latched off of Deku's chest, and because it can be integrated in Deku's suit for his Spider logo. Deku can also chuck it, and it would um, shoot out webbing. And Deku can pretty much control it from his web shooters, making it kind of like you know, a no control um, item. Pretty much, you can shoot webbing that is artificially made by Deku, and it also can detect and record messages from, you know, um, enemy bases, or, you know, a villain that's talking. So, Deku can get some dirt, and, you know, take out people in court, and stuff like that, and pretty much, you know, do pretty good stuff, in general, with the Spire Drone. Deku makes about three, and gives the, and gives the, you know, the rest of the programming to um, Blondie, Blondie says keep it, and pretty much Deku takes it back home, taking three, engineering a couple more. Now Deku does a color, a new color scheme on it, making it red, blue, and with green lights, kind of making it kind of look weird. Deku does artificially, De Deku does, you know, tweak, a tweak with it a little bit, making it blue lights, pretty much just looking like the same exact drone as that was used in Spider-Man Homecoming, but, you know, just a more classic Spider-Man, um, look. So, Deku goes to sleep that night, dreaming about, you know, Blondie, and waking up a little bit, you know, confused. So, I'm gonna leave it off here, guys, just messing with you guys. You really think I would've let you off with, you know, you know Spider-Man vigilante scene? So, Deku wakes up that night, in the middle of the night, looking around. Deku gets into his vigilante costume. Deku does deck out his new, you know, um, vigilante costume, a little bit, a little bit of new technology from, uh, Blondie that he picked up there, that he swiped. Pretty much the web shooters are more, are built to, you know, make Deku's webbing a lot more, you know, thicker to a point that it's like steel. Deku's webbing is already incredibly, you know, strong, but in this, these web shooters make them stronger. Pretty much adding more, you know, um, adding the con ingredient to the weapon that comes out of Deku's wrist, making them stronger, like, to a point that it can, you know, keep the Infinity Goblet at bay. That type of strong weapon. Deku also has, um, more, you know, defined, uh, Deku also has a backpack that's installed in there holding the spider drones. Because he made multiple. So Deku walks up in the into the um, buildings, swinging to building to building. Deku swinging and swinging, and then he gets stopped by a green energy. Then he gets pushed back into a nearby alleyway, getting stopped by somebody in a green and purple suit. Deku looks up and sees that it's somebody. He is somebody, and Deku has a certain you know kind of feeling that he knows this person. This person grabs Deku and then gets him because Deku did you know knocked out just a little bit and he did. Days off while he was, you know, noticing the guy. So Deku wakes up in a w warehouse, and Deku does have, you know, tech around his mask. So if somebody touched it, he was they were gonna get shocked by Deku's, you know, 
natural electricity that he makes. His bioelectricity. So Deku looks looks at um pretty much the guy and he explains that you are Spider Man, aren't you? Pretty much Deku um sees this and recognizes that voice and says, um, blah 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 and technically this voice belongs to Deku's uncle, the scientist that I explained in the first what if. Deku first on um, what if on this you know, part. So Deku um does answer right and he takes off his mask and says, Oh, so you know who I am And Deku didn't put Uncle in front of it, he just said his name. So pretty much Deku is confused but also very you know, extreme why his, you know, uncle is a villain even though like he's pretty successful in life. His his dad his uncle says that, Well, I'm in some, you know, gang pain stuff and I didn't pay a lot of money to kill you. So let's get this over with. So he takes out a uh electric uh, electric blade and it's about, you know, stab Deku. Deku de did have enough time to you know, use the web shooters. The web shooters have sort of a heating mechanism around them. So if Deku was tied up by the wrist, they would heat up they would heat up and you know burn anything that was around them. Not in them, but around them. So Deku uses this opportunity to break out of the oh, t the rope and pretty much flips over the electric blade, making Deku's uncle cut right to the um chair. If you're already wondering um, I pretty much did a 180 and turned Deku's uncle into Prowler. So Deku starts dodging and dodging, cuts and blows and strikes towards, you know, Plower. Mm. Uh, Prowler? I can't really pronounce it. Plowler? Man, whatever. He starts dodging his uncle's attacks. Eventually, Deku gets an upper hand, grabs him by the shoulder, and pretty much, you know, electrocutes him, knocking him out for a certain amount of time for Deku, you know, to flee and swing away. Now Deku is swinging and swinging and swinging, eventually hearing a huge explosion, looking down and seeing somebody with, you know, um, some sort of gauntlets around his fist, uh, shooting people back. And you're probably wondering, if you already, you know, catched up on this, it's um, pretty much the shocker. Deku runs, swings down there, seeing that the villains, the heroes there and the cops can't do anything at the time, swing down there and land right on top of the guy, knocking him out because Deku was on a really tall freaking building. So Deku did a full a full um as PS4 Assassin's Creed jump straight on this guy's chest, breaking a few of his bones, but not to a point that he's gonna die. Deku swings off immediately, seeing that the pro hero is about to catch him, but they soon realize that the that the villain has internal bleeding. They are able to, you know, help him out and he doesn't, you know, die or anything. He does go to jail still, but pretty much Deku swings down the city Becoming more of, you know, a vigilant, more of a, you know, pe man of the people, and becoming more and more, ci more citizens like. Deku does go out in the, c in, you know, the daytime, um, helping out small problems like saving people's cats, and pretty much, you know, um, taking out um, car chases in the daytime. Deku does, you know, always have to flee away from the scene. Some of the times the pro heroes are kind of, you know, cool and chill with Deku. But when some of the times they find out, you know, Deku be uh, straight up some of the times, um, you know, being the snot out of these villains. They sort of, you know, um, Endeavor does, you know, kind of like Deku because, well, he does, you know, doesn't play around with villains like him. But yeah, Deku, Deku did almost get, you know, get stopped by All Might. But Deku was, you know, quick enough for All Might not to, you know, see him because he did take out a villain that All Might was fighting. So Deku... Pretty much did become a very popular vigilante, one of the most you know likable and most popular vigilante out there. All Might did you know like Deku, but he everybody knew by Deku's height and with and his voice, Deku did have a more you know the, um more scruffled up face than you know um uh than he um more scruffled up more scruffled up voice. I mean because he had the mask on, so no one really know that knew and couldn't put, you know, two two together right at right, you know, at the base off. So they had to, you know, be be, you know, a very close to Deku to you know know his voice when he has a mask on. So Deku he pretty much um webs the building to building 
after, you know, the whole entire Prowler incident, going back to his house, getting undressed, and getting to his, you know, um, sweeping outfit, looking at the building, and wondering why is his uncle doing this. After that, Deku goes back to sleep, and I'm going to leave it off here, guys. See you guys later. Bye. And I hope you like this what if. Now, go in the comments, guys, um, because I am going to be uploading what if Deku, what if Bell was a werewolf, and that's based off a different anime. If you don't know who Bell is, look up um Bell from Is It's Around the Pickup Girls in the Dungeon. It's a pretty good anime. You can find it on Netflix and Hulu. So check it out. And also, um I will be uploading after that video, I will be uploading a What If Deku was a Werewolf part um I think yeah, part six. So guys, see you guys later. Bye. Deuces.